Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today it's all about how to identify fake foods. There are fake foods all around you and we're going to identify it today and I'm going to share with you the top 11 fake foods to help you choose wisely in the grocery store. Well, before we go there, please go visit biblicalnutritionacademy.com and check out all of the courses that we have prepared for you so that you can learn at your own pace God's recipe for excellent health. Always includes the one ingredient, God loves you. Now, let's go check out these top lab experiments in the grocery store. A lab experiment food or a fake food, remember I teach you the three principles. If you're not familiar with the three principles, please hit like, subscribe, and the bell so you can stay connected to us as I teach you about the biblical diet, the Bible diet, how God wants us to eat. Principle number one, eat the foods God called food. So behind me you see all of this produce, that's principle number one. Principle number two is eat the foods that God created as close to the way He created it before they've been altered lab experiment beyond our health benefit. And then principle number three, don't let any food become your God. No addictions. So principle number two is all about the alteration of a food and actually through the alteration process that started in the late 1800s, some foods have totally gone to 100% lab experiment created in a lab for you. They may taste good, they may look good, they may smell good, but they're fake foods and we're going to identify it. Now let's hit the grocery aisles. When I teach about Eve's dilemma, and I'll put a link to that video down below, I use a quote from, from Robert La Follette, and he was a congressman from Wisconsin. This was way back. And he basically said that a food, for the first time in history, a food has been created to look like something is not, taste like something is not, and, and act like something is not. And that was the first lab experiment food uh, that gained a lot of notoriety, and it was margarine. Well, margarine was not the last of the lab experiments. In fact, we have many lab experiments in our grocery store today. But lab experiments, they are not in the natural form that God created. And so they're gonna cause hormonal stress, which is gonna to lead to adrenal stress. It's gonna to cause to a blood sugar imbalance. It's gonna to cause to weight gain because your cells do not recognize the ingredients all of the time. And many times the ingredients are 100% a chemical. They may be made to taste like something, but they're not. They are a chemical, therefore they're going to have effects on your body. So they could create allergies, they could create food sensitivities, weight gain, or extreme weight loss, almost like an anorexic effect. They can lead to cancer cells because cancers are an opportunistic um, misgrowth of a cell, and that can happen because of the toxins in lab experiments. Now, food number one, as you can see right beside me, is going to be juice. The amount of actual fruit in these bottles is very little. And so we have some of the juices have a lot of juice in them or a lot of the fruit, but a really good juice is if you juice the food yourself. So if you juice your own fruits, you juice your own vegetables, and all of the produce grocery stores have lots of good variety that you can choose. But to buy bottled juice, you're getting a lot of water, you're getting sometimes added sugar, and you're getting very little of the actual fruit. So when you have less than 10% of an actual fruit, you have more of a lab experiment than you actually have a real food. So that's number one. One of the oldest cookies is Oreos and the most popular cookie of all time. They used to be called a sandwich cream, C-R-E-A-M. But, and actually these were started in 1912. I know I was shocked too at the date when these came out, but yet there is no cream. In fact, they've changed the word to almost be a creme. They've changed the word to where you see right there, it says C-R-E-M-E. -E. So they're, they're actually being very, very accurate that there is no cream in this cookie. It is all a lab experiment. It is all fake flavorings and fake ingredients. And it is not the cookie that you think it is. I know, but you're still addicted to it, but you can quit that anytime you want. So cookies is one of our options here that is a fake food. Number three is fake ice creams. Look for real ice cream instead of the products that are just a flavored dessert. They have to have 10%, um, just a minimum 10% cream to be a real ice cream. Find the ice cream that has cream or make it yourself and make it with 100% whole cream. 
Number four is imitation cheese. It's been around since the day I was born. What it is, is old pieces of cheese according to the government standards that have been added with a lot of emulsifiers so that you get a creamy, melty cheese. That is fake cheese. It's not gonna give you what you need as far as nutrition. It just creates a feel in your mouth. It melts really well. It's still a fake food. Number five under fake foods is Cool Whip. Cool Whip was made in the 1960s to be a product, to be an ingredient that would not melt and would still hold its shape. One more food that I just can't walk away from and not share with you. I shared with you the comment in the very beginning, a food that was made to look like something it is not, taste like something it is not, and sell like something it is not, is margarine. The very first fake food on the industry, and yet it is still available today in your grocery store. So why would you eat something that you can't believe it's not butter when it's really not butter? Just eat the butter and enjoy that instead. So no more fake foods on your plate, no more fake foods in your home. Just eat real food. Your body will totally change and adapt to it and love it because it knows what to do with the real food that God created. Fake food number seven, actually Parmesan cheese. The requirement for the amount of wood pulp that can be allowed to be put in this to be a non-caking agent is not limited. A company can use as much as they need to for anti-caking. So what percentage are you actually getting with cheese and what percentage are you actually getting with fillers? I don't know that answer. I would just eat real Parmesan cheese, freshly shaved or even the whole chunk and avoid the wood pulp. A fake food I wanted to point out to you is the fact that we have original syrup. You do not see the word maple in it. Many of them are automatically telling you artificially flavored or they are just a syrup. A real syrup, a real food that's not a fake food would actually say maple syrup right there. That is a real food. This one here is a fake food. Number nine is imitation flavorings, and you've seen them. Many times you might have bought it just because it was a cheaper price, but this is totally artificially flavored, classic taste, artificially flavored, rich, without any color. It's still a fake food. It's trying to pretend to be a lemon or a lime or a vanilla extract, but it is totally fake. So here we have sushi. Many times people don't realize that a lot of the sushi, as beautiful as it is, and when you get real sushi and how great it tastes, most sushis are made with fake meat. And this is an imitation crab. It tells you right up front it's imitation crab. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Sometimes they use a salmon, but it's always a farmed salmon, and not a, a wild caught salmon. So you're not gonna get the nutritional benefit. So to me, I call that a fake food. Even though people buy this all the time, it's immigration crab, yet what they don't realize is it's a mix of old fish, usually white fish, and with fillers such as wheat, egg, and then a transglutamase meat glue. Yeah, you heard me say it. The red is a red dye, and then it has artificial crab flavorings. So consider that when you're buying this, what you're actually getting. This one is actually saying it's made with wild Alaska pollock instead of the white fish and it just depends which package you're buying as to what fish you're going to be getting. So even though it may be made with an Alaskan pollock, it still has other ingredients to pull it all together and to give it the look that it needs to look like crab meat. It's still imitation crab. Number 11 is nut milks. What they're proven is that the actual percentage of actual nuts in many of these nut milks is very low, if any at all. So you have to go back and research the company to find out how much of the nuts that they're actually putting in the milk and calling it a nut milk. In fact, the government and the dairy industry is getting involved to get more of a clarification to identify what is a true nut milk and what is not. When it comes to nut milks, number 11, it is very hard to know how much of the actual grain or the nuts are actually in the milk that you're buying. In fact, the FDA and the dairy industry is getting involved to make it a little bit more restrictive as to what they can claim as a nut milk. But still, you have to verify, is this really a nut milk or just a nut flavored milk? But thanks for letting me teach you about fake foods, as I call it, lab experiments. Well, we do not need to be part of the lab experiment. We need. We just need to enjoy God's foods. Remember the three principles because they will always work for us. They're timeless. They will give you exactly what your body needs in the exact proportions that your body needs and you will feel fantastic. Principle number one, eat the foods 
God called good. And good in Genesis means excellent of its kind, valuable in estimation. Nothing man can ever create in a lab or wherever they create foods can ever compete or compare with what God has given us. Principle number two, eat the foods as close to the way he designed it before it's been altered beyond its health benefit for you. And principle number three, don't let any food become an addiction. If you can't walk away from a food, if you can't put a food away for a minimum of 30 days and not go crazy, then you're good. But if you have an addiction, you need to release yourself from that addiction because only God can be on the throne. Not a food, not a drink, not a drug, or not a relationship outside your marriage. We must keep God first in our life. Thanks for letting me share with you God's recipe for excellent health and being here to teach you so much about food that you will see God's love in everything that I bring to you. Be sure you hit like and subscribe and go visit our page, biblicalnutritionacademy.com, where we have all of our courses. And if you say, but I don't want to do a course online, I want something to read, I highly recommend Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study. That is where I started all of my teaching. And then when I teach that class, I always have people go through the nutrition manual along with it. And then the cookbook. Why not make your own foods in your own kitchen so you know exactly what's in it and you're protecting your family's health. Thanks for watching.